In the JavaScript variable section, we have learned that in order for a JavaScript program to do anything, we must provide information to it. And we also used variables to store and keep track of information that our program could use and manipulate. That information put into a variable is called value. But the question is, what exactly are stored values? Values come in many different types, and those different types are often called data types. All programming languages have built-in data types and handle it in a slightly different way. Now at this point, we have used two JavaScript data types, strings and numbers. Numbers or numeric data types are used for making calculations like adding, subtracting, computing total prices, keeping track of number of likes of blog posts, and so on. For example, a social media site like Facebook uses numbers to calculate and keep track of how many likes and comments. Strings are used for words, sentences, and other text in your program. You write a string as a series of letters, digits, and other characters inside a single or double quotation marks. The characters are strung together. We have already seen strings in action when we use console.log, alert, and document.write. We passed each a string. We use string all the time when programming. Now, let's learn how to create and work with strings. To code along with me, first download the course folder from the link in the description below, unzip it, and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called JavaScript Strings. And then open the index.html file using Google Chrome. Here I also open the JavaScript console. In the index.html file, I also link the string.js file. So each time we want to add a message to a web page, pop up an alert dialog, or collect information from a web form, we are going to deal with strings. For example, this message JavaScript string inside quotation marks is string. As I mentioned, a string is a series of letters, numbers, and other characters inside quotation marks. All of these are examples of strings. A string can also contain HTML tags, like the p tags here in the last line. The quote marks around a string instruct the JavaScript engine to treat the contents inside as a regular set of characters. In JavaScript, we can use either double or single quotes to create a string. We just need to be consistent. For example, if I begin a string with a double quote, I need to end it with a double quote. Or if I begin a string with a single quote, I need to end it with a single quote. If not, I will get a syntax error. As you can see, the console lets me know that there's an invalid or unexpected token. And there's one more thing I want to mention is that placing a quotation mark inside a string is a bit tricky. For example, if I want to say we are here, I need to be careful with the single quotation mark after the word we. In this case, if my string is created using single quotes, I'll get a syntax error. As you can see, the console lets me know that there's a syntax error called unexpected identifier. The single quote starts the string, but the next single quote after the word we ends the string. This is how the browser's JavaScript engine thinks. So the rest of the characters are treated as if they're outside the string and therefore we get an error. Now, one solution is to use double quotes to create a string if you have one or more single quotes inside your string. Since the first quotation mark is double quote, the JavaScript engine will not end the string until it finds the next double quotation mark. Or we can use single quotes to create a string whenever we need double quotes inside a string. For example, 
If I want to put an HTML code inside a string and the tag requires an attribute, which I normally write using double quotes, I write it like this. There is yet another way to put a quote inside a string. We can use what's called an escape character. I'll update the status string back to single quotes. And if I include a backslash before the quotation mark inside the string, the JavaScript engine treats the quote mark like any other character. It's literally just a quote mark character at this point. As you can see, it doesn't appear in the console output. I can use the backslash before either single or double quote marks. Finally, keep in mind that we also get an error if we write strings on multi-lines. For example, like this. On the first line, I'll write. On the next line. And on the third line. Save the changes, refresh the page, and we get a syntax error. It says invalid or unexpected token. Well, the JavaScript engine evaluates each line here separately. And this is how the JavaScript engine thinks. The first quote here starts a string, but it doesn't have a closing quote. And the second line is not wrapped in quotes at all. And the third line is missing the opening quotes. So if I want to write strings on more than one lines, I need to escape any new line characters with a backslash. Adding a backslash at the end of each line tells the JavaScript engine that the string should continue to the next line, so that I'll not get errors. In an upcoming lectures, I'll teach you a more elegant way to create and work with strings with a feature called template literals.